Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are doing a chop and chat. I'm doing this a little bit differently. I recorded the footage and I'm doing a voiceover. So hopefully this ends up working out okay. Um, we'll just have to see. But I'm doing mainly Teddy B's from the last pre-order and RTS. But I also had a bunch of... Um, L3 that have just been kind of sitting around that I wanted to chop up to, so I threw that in. So I've got a long list of questions here um, to answer, so if I don't answer them all in this video, I'll throw them to the next one. Um, but yeah, we'll go ahead and get started. It looks like I'm starting with Hot Pie from Teddy Bees. If I remember right, this is Chai, Pink Chiffon, and there's another note that I cannot think of at this time, but I'll try to <laughs> remember the notes as we show them. The first question was, what was the best moment of 2022? And I've actually decided that that question, I think Charity sent me that one, decided uh, or inspired me to make a whole video about it. And so I have that filmed and ready to go, but I'm going to post that closer to New Year's, maybe New Year's Eve. Um, just kind of, I was going through all my camera footage and stuff, and it kind of really gave me time to reflect on um, my year. So we'll go through all of that in 2022 video at the end of the end of the year, but probably going to Alaska, I would say, has to be one of the best moments ever. What are you looking forward to in 2023? Oh, I don't feel like I've got a great answer for this. I mean, I've got a couple of trips planned. I'm going to Boston for work in March, which won't be too touristy or anything, but I will get to get up there again. Um, I'm going to Texas in Ma May? April. The end of April. <laughs> Why could I not remember when I was going? And we're doing a Waco road trip and doing all the, like, Magnolia um sites. So I'm moving on to Witches Be Crazy for Blueberries, which is that birthday cake, pecan waffles, sugar cookie dough, cinnamon, and the sweet blueberries. So yeah, we're going to Waco and I would think I'm just looking forward to hopefully buying a house. <laughs> we'll have to see. I've been working on buying a house this year and because of the market, it's been challenging. So hopefully I'll be able to accomplish that in 2023. What made you want to get a dog? So, I mean, I've always been a huge animal lover, love, you know, all animals in general. Dogs obviously are very high on the list. Um, I have a degree in marine biology and I love marine mammals Sharks, stingrays, dolphins, whales, seals. I love all of that type of stuff. So my whole life I've been just a big animal person. Um, we really didn't grow up with dogs too much uh, for a variety of reasons. But when I was an adult, you know, I knew that I wanted one. But I take owning a dog or any pet very seriously. Um, I didn't want to get him and not be able to pay for his medical needs and the things that he needs. And, you know, I didn't want to get a dog, just let him sit in a kennel all day long, you know. So I really made sure that the time was right for me financially and that I could commit the time to him that he deserved. And uh, to be honest, I <laughs> we're going to get real deep here, but this is just the truth. I was lonely. I mean, I am uh, 29 and I am unmarried, no kids. And so getting a dog kind of helped me through a rough time in my life where I was feeling really upset about the fact that, you know, that I don't have those things. So he truly is my child. Like he is changed my life in so many ways. He is the biggest pain in my butt, but he is the best thing ever as well. And I'm so grateful that I got him and, you know, I think I made the, the right decision at the right time. And he's my, he's my bestie. I love him so much. So if you guys didn't see 
my home fragrance empties where I've got chaos in the title of the video. You should watch that if you uh, need a laugh because that's kind of like my typical life with Rip. Just total chaos. He's the funniest dog ever. He's hysterical. He makes me laugh every single day. And he's just a, he's been a gift. So yeah, I got a dog for the animal lover that I am. Some loneliness as well. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't regret it for a second. So it looks like I missed, uh, we chopped Petrichor from Teddy Bees, which was that wet dirt after rain type of scent. Oh, it's so, so good. And now we are moving on to It's Fall, y'all, which is like Marshmallow Fireside. I think it had like some other smoky notes, orange, things like that. So most of this will wait until next fall, to be honest. But I really like having all my stuff chopped up, even though it's not as pretty, just so I'm ready to use it when that time comes. How is your Christmas shopping going and are you a last minute or early shopper? So funny, um, I went, I went really light on the Christmas gifts for you guys. I mean, I really spent less money than I normally do. Um, and instead, I think in December alone, I have donated to three different animal shelters. So one in New Jersey for a hoarding situation, um, the Stray Rescue of St. Louis, who does a lot of rescues in the area, and then a very, uh, very local shelter to me that's um, a non or a no kill shelter. I was gonna say nonprofit, a no kill shelter. Um, I donated to them as well because I really I'm inspired by what they do. So I kind of spent some of that extra money. On, on animals instead. So that made me feel good. And I think, you know, Christmas presents are fun and great and all, but by the time you get to an adulthood, you know, usually you buy what you, what you need. And so I thought I would try to do something a little bit different this year. Not that I didn't get presents. My family does have presents, but normally I'm like a two, three present a person type, type of shopper and people are getting one <laughs> this year. So, um, I am behind in a way. So I think all my presents are bought if I'm remembering, but I still have to wrap them. <laughs> and I, uh, yeah, it's easy to buy the presents, but it's harder for whatever reason to wrap them. So I've got a present to wrap. Um, I would say I'm a fairly early shopper for the most part because I try to kind of start thinking about Christmas around like October, September, October and get ideas and think about things because I do, to the best of my abilities, like to come up with creative gifts. And so I want to make sure I have plenty of time to come up with something for everybody. Plus, it just takes the stress away of shopping at the last minute and, you know, not knowing what to get them and stuff. So I yeah have a lot to do this week to get prepared for Christmas. I'll say that, but you know, we'll we'll make it through. We always do. The Grinch or Santa, um, both. But I guess if I have to pick, I would choose Santa for sure. We did believe in Santa growing up, and you know, uh, my niece and nephew believe in Santa, you know, at the moment. And, um, so it's really fun getting to see them, you know, experience Christmas and Santa, you know, kind of for the first times Coke or Pepsi, um, either if either are available, um, diet rather than the regular, um, diet Coke, I would prefer over everything. And especially, Diet Coke from McDonald's. I know some of you understand <laughs> the obsession here. It's like what I like to call spicy Coke. There's something about the Coke at McDonald's, the combination of like the ice and it's the perfect kind of carbonation syrup ratio. And when you drink it for the first time, like right when you get it, it's like a little bit fiery. Like I know I'm not the only one that has experienced this. So let me know if you guys know what I'm talking about, but Diet Coke. Um, although Dr. Pepper is my favorite soda ever, I just don't drink it all that much because I mean, I try not to drink 
soda a ton, but um, I drink diet rather than regular when I do drink soda. I've kind of given up at this point telling you guys when I'm chopping, so <laughs> you'll just have to, you know, see for yourself. Um, coffee or tea? I think if I had to pick, I would pick coffee. However, there is a tea that I have found that I really like. Jessica Braun recommended it, um, and I picked it up, and it is amazing. It is the Harney and Sons Hot Cinnamon Sunset, I think it's called. So I've been drinking that for like two years or so. I kind of alternate each morning between coffee and tea, just depending on my mood for the day. And uh, yeah, so it's just regular tea, and then I just put some honey in it. It's amazing. But I guess for the most part, I would say coffee. But I'm not one of those people. Like some people can drink coffee throughout the entire day. That is not me. I have like a cup in the morning. Maybe on a weekend in the winter time, I'll have a second cup, like a little bit later in the day or something. But yeah, one cup is enough for me usually. And I uh, I don't normally need more. Okay, this one's a tough one. If you could only buy from what from one vendor for the rest of your life, who would it be? I feel like you can answer this question in so many different ways. Like, if I had to think at the moment, like, what is my favorite vendor? Like, what's a vendor that I wouldn't want to not be getting wax from? It would be Teddy B's. So, kind of my gut is saying Teddy B's. However, I also really love Super Tarts. A lot of my absolute favorite scents are from Super Tarts. And so, would I give up Super Tarts? And all of those scents that I absolutely love, um, yeah, that would be that would be super, super tough. And then also, if you think about it, you know, Teddy B's only has three ish, I think, pre orders a year, and so the amount of time that you can get her wax is really slim. You have a slimmer selection, and so kind of for that reason, I would almost want to pick L three, right? Because L three. One is the least expensive. It has the most variety and pours the most often. So if I had to pick one vendor for the rest of my life and that's all I could buy, I would choose L3 just because of those of those reasons. But I would definitely be missing <laughs> my super tarts and my teddy bees. Like if I if I could only melt one vendor and I had like an unlimited amount of time Um, that I could buy from them. If, you know, all those things weren't a question, it would be probably Teddy B's just because I think her blends are just so beautiful and unique. And I've just really been enjoying them lately. So I'm going to pick L3. I'm going to select an answer, but I feel like that, that question could have many facets of answers depending on kind of how you interpret it. Wax or candles? Um, Back in the day, I probably would have said candles whenever I first started this home fragrance lifestyle, (laughs) but I definitely choose wax. Um, I don't have too many candles anymore. The candles that I do have are just like my absolute favorites from Bath and Body Works. So like leaves, sweater weather, um, vanilla snowflake, like those just consistent favorites of mine. But I just prefer wax. Um, I like that I can spread the scent throughout my home. Um, I don't really like dealing with the soot of candles. Um, I don't mind Bath & Body Works candles because I think that if something's not performing, I can just put it in my candle crock or on like a hot plate, you know, warmer and get all the scent out of it. So I like the Bath & Body Works candles. I just prefer wax, I guess. Um, I also don't really have a ton of storage to be storing like a bunch of bulky candles really. So that's another reason that I kind of just prefer wax. I like all the different scents that you can get in wax and not that Bath and Body Works doesn't have different scents, but they do stick to a lot of the same ones too. And so I like the variety that you can get in, um, in wax versus candles. Any updates on your low buy? 
So I'm not going to discuss that too much here, only because I am making monthly check-ins discussing all of that, like things I bought, things that were tempting me, you know, things I resisted. So I just did my December update. So I will link that somewhere here <laughs> in a card. So if you haven't seen that update, you can go check that out. And then I'll have another one, you know, in mid-January, I would assume. So you can check back every month for those low buy updates there. Do you double bag your wax? No, I do not double bag. I know that Natalie does, and I think Charity does as well. But for the most part, I don't find that I'm getting things that don't have a scent to them. Like, I think, not that this has never happened, definitely has. But for the most part, I'm using my items up within a year or so. So I guess I just don't feel the need to double bag. I am sure that it would be better for the wax. However, well, that's just a lot of work. <laughs> so maybe one of these days I will, uh, once I can get around to, you know, ordering some bags. And I don't think it's a bad idea. It's just, it's never anything I've done. So no, at the moment, I do not double bag. And then kind of on the same vein, how do you store your wax? So I store all of my wax in my guest bedroom in the dresser that's in there. So it's not in any particular way. It's just, I try to organize it by vendor. So like all my clamshells are in one drawer, semi-organized by vendor. My super tarts is all together for the most part, you know. So I kind of organize it by vendor or type of wax. Like my scoopables are all together. And I just try to keep that room kind of dark, you know, unless somebody's gonna be using it. And yeah, it just stays in those, um, those dresser drawers. And it's worked well for me because it's not in tubs or anything, but I can easily get to it. And it's not, um, you know, I, I need, I wouldn't be using that for anything else, right? So um, I don't know if I've ever had a guest sleep in that room, to be honest with you. I don't know if I ever have. <laughs> we just don't have people come over very much. And, you know, my brother, he lives in... Texas and so when he comes home he just kind of naturally he stays at my mom's house and um yeah just stays there and so it's just kind of a second bedroom for me honestly but anyway yeah it's stored all in just the dresser that's there and it has worked worked well for me I've been doing that for a couple of years I would think I've kept all my wax there so yeah it worked well so far what would you like to see offered in the t January Teddy Bees pre-order? Um, a couple of things. I would love to see more of Tiff's favorite bakery or even just a very blackberry dominant scent because I'm out of her blackberry and she's got my favorite blackberry. It's so good. Um, I have plenty of witchy woman, so I'm not stressed about getting more of that, but that would always be nice to see. I would love to see Trickin' and Treatin'. I would get loaves of that. I would love to see Surfside Sweet Shop. I would get loaves of that. Um, Natalie talks about campfire stories a lot from Teddy Bees. And looking over those notes, I think that I would really love that one. So I really hope to see that one make a return. I would love to see her, her Vanilla Snowflake dupe. She's got one of the best... Vanilla Snowflake dupes from Bath and Body Works, in my opinions. I love it. And then I would love to see Snow Cones by the Sea. Um, I feel like her last couple of pre-orders have been very Polo heavy, which is great. But I'm looking to see some kind of other scents, some, you know, more spring, summer scents I would love to get. But yes, yeah, Snow Cones by the Sea, I feel like I would get loaves in too. So hopefully, hopefully something... Um, some of those will get poured. We will just have to find out, I guess, in a month or so. What was your very first car? So I've actually only had two cars in my life. Um, the car I have now and then my very first car. So my first car was my mom's car. Um, and she, when I turned 16, she bought a brand new car and I got hers. So it was a 2001, I believe, 
Toyota Camry. Um, it's like the old school body style. I loved that car. It was so reliable. Toyota makes some really great cars. I, I really, really loved it. So I drove that all throughout college, high school. I think I was 22 or so, 23 maybe. How long have I had my car for? Anyway, when I bought my new car, which is the car I'm driving now, and I will drive it until it is dead. So Toyota Camry, and now I have a part electric um, Ford Fusion. Are you setting a wax budget for your low buy? Um, I'm not very good with making budgets. <laughs> not for wax, at least. Um, so no, I am not. I. It's It's hard to make a budget when you don't know what scents are going to be offered and like pre-orders and stuff. Like if a vendor offers like one of my favorite scents ever, I'm going to purchase it. So I'm not trying to stress myself out here. I'm trying to just make better choices with purchasing. Like for example, just this past weekend, we had a Rose Girls ready to ship. Britta's had a pre-order. L3 has a lot of great stuff on her site right now. Um, There's just... Uh, oh, Bath and Body Works had a five ninety five dollars single wood candle sale. And in the past, I would have literally bought from every single one of those, right? Just because I would have picked out some stuff from each one and purchased it. Now, I only purchase from the Brita's pre-order. So I'm just trying to be more mindful. Like, I'm not trying to be crazy. I'm just trying to minimize my stash and just be more conscientious about what is coming into the collection. So if... I don't know if L3 was offering my absolute favorite scent, like, and she, I don't know, like if L3 was offering today is October 3rd and she said, Hey, I'm not going to pour this again for three years. Well, I'm going to buy a bunch of it. So, and you know, then a budget would go out the window. So I'm not one for making a wax budget just because I feel like it doesn't work for me that well. What are your wax stash goals for 2023? And this person was asking too about like, are there specific vendors I want to use up? So I'm trying to think about my collection and <laughs> like my organization and think about what I want to use up. So long story short, just like a broad overview here, I want to use up probably like two or three drawers worth of wax. So like I said, I've got a whole dresser full, right? And I think I would be happy if I had like three full drawers of wax. And the third one probably not even being full, maybe only half full with the room to add more. And, you know, I don't want to be over that. So that would be me using up a good couple drawers full of wax. So specifically, I would love to finish off a lot of my scoops that just aren't my favorite. Um, in general, finish off things that aren't my favorite, right? And really kind of whittle my stash down to a lot of my favorites or new things I'm trying. But, um, you know, at this point, I know for the most part what I like, right? So I want to get through a lot of my scoops. I want to finish my Candle Daddy stuff, my Yankees stuff, a lot of my old Walmart clamshells. I want to finish the Scentsy that I have that, um, isn't my absolute favorite scents. I want to really work on my Scentsy bricks just because they're old, they're big, they take up a lot of space. Um, yeah, just anything in any of the vendors that I don't absolutely love, I want to work through. And that doesn't mean I, I'm going to melt my favorite stuff too, but I really am focused on kind of moving out the old... Um, vendors that I don't have much of that I don't really feel like I would want to purchase more of moving stuff out like that. So I don't know. We'll see how much I'm able to do. Um, I'm excited for the year. I'm excited for the check-ins and I know I'm going to slip up with this low buy here and there and that's okay. I just have to kind of give myself some grace too with it. What is your favorite music? I have a really diverse taste in music, I will say, but in general, I would say my favorite is classic rock. So I love Bob Seger. I love Fleetwood Mac. I love like the Eagles and Elton John and CCR, Simon and Garfunkel, like anything in that type of, you know, 60s to 80s, I really love. Um, And then I love, you know, 
90s and 2000s music too, but I would say classic rock is my favorite. I love like beachy music like Jimmy Buffett, Kenny Chesney. Um, Some of my favorite songs are A Pirate Looks at 40 by Jimmy Buffett and then Don't Fear the Reaper by Blue Oyster Cult and just Against the Wind by Bob Seger, Gypsy by Fleetwood Mac. Just I could name (laughs) so many. I just music is one of my favorite things ever. I constantly have music playing through um, like the speakers at home. I love like playing with uh, Rip and listening to music and kind of singing and dancing throughout the house. Like when I'm cleaning, I just, I, I love music. I've got a whole podcast, a whole podcast. What am I saying? I've got a whole playlist on my Spotify that I just call serotonin. And it's just those songs that really just make me feel good. And so I'll listen to that a lot in the morning, like on my way to work, just to kind of get me hyped for the day and everything. Um, but yeah, classic, classic rock is my favorite. What are your favorite movies? So I am definitely like a thriller, mystery, horror type of person in general. So horror movies are my favorite. Um, the Halloween series is my number one. Um, I love like Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street, The Conjuring, and like anything like that. I really, really enjoy. Um, Harry Potter is a huge part of my life. Uh, one of the questions here is also about favorite books. So we can get into that at that point too, but I love anything Harry Potter. Um, some of my other kind of just standalone favorite movies are Rear Window, um, Psycho, Jaws. Let's see. Fried Green Tomatoes is one of my absolute favorite movies ever. Um, A Walk to Remember. I'm sure I'm missing like a big one and later I'll be like, oh my gosh, you forgot to mention this one. Um, But yeah, those are some of my just absolute favorites. Anything that kind of gets me into like a spooky mood is just amazing. Um, You know, like my favorite Christmas movies. I love Christmas Vacation. I love A Christmas Story. So yeah, those are my favorite movies. But to be honest, I don't watch movies a ton. Um, yeah, I feel like I watch YouTube, honestly, more than like TV, more than anything anymore, right? So um, I mean, I do watch some TV, but I just feel like YouTube is <laughs> kind of where it's at right now for me. So as far as favorite TV shows, that's tougher. Um, Friends is my favorite TV show of all time. There is nothing in my opinion that beats friends. Um, I also really love Yellowstone. Obviously my dog's name is Rip. So if you watch Yellowstone, I'm sure you were able to pick up uh, the Yellowstone reference there. Um, what else? I loved Breaking Bad. That was such a great show when it came out. One Tree Hill was one of my favorites for a long time. Gilmore Girls is great. Um, yeah, but I just, I don't watch a ton of TV right now. I'm currently watching the watcher on Netflix, which is totally up my alley, (laughs) just, uh, with kind of the spooky feels to it, but I've been really enjoying that. Favorite books. Okay. I pulled up my Goodreads so I can (laughs) feel like I could not remember all of my favorites here. Obviously Harry Potter. I think that's just an obvious, obvious answer. That is my favorite book series ever. Um, Verity by Colleen Hoover was one of the best books I have ever read. Oh my gosh, it's so messed up. Major, major trigger warnings. Uh, so look into that book before you read it. If you're sensitive to that type of stuff. Let's see, The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware. Um, let's see, Peter Swanson. I love a lot of his novel. Oh my gosh, a lot of his novels, can I speak? The Kind Worth Killing was my favorite by him. Taylor Jenkins Reid, I love Daisy Jones and the Six. Seven uh, Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Um, B.A. Paris is one of my favorite authors. She's got a lot of great mystery thriller novels. Where the Crawdads Sing by Dela Owens. Let's look at... The books I read this year, let's see. Right now, I've read 40 books this year. And what are my favorite of the year? The Therapist 
by B.A. Ther- Paris. I really loved that one. Um, the It Girl by Ruth Ware. I read that was really good. Daisy Darker by Alice Feeney. What else did I read that I really, really love? The Last House on Needless Street. That was pretty good, too. I actually read Fried Green Tomatoes. You know, I just mentioned that Fried Green Tomatoes was one of my favorite movies, and I read the book this year as well, and that one was really, really good, too. It was, it felt like you were in the movie set, you know. That was really good. But yeah, those are some of my favorites. Like I said, I kind of go through, go for anything that's like thriller, mystery for the most part. What are your favorite warmers? Guys, I don't, I don't know. I don't have like a favorite. I don't have a warmer that I normally go to. I just have like basic hot plate warmers. I have one from Amazon in my kitchen that you guys see often. You can see it right now with the dolphins. I like this one. I have um, like a sandcastle one from Scentsy. Yeah, I just, I have a variety of different warmers in my home and I could not tell you a favorite. I know that Maybe that makes me a bad wax YouTuber. I don't know too much about my warmers, but I just, I just use what, what I enjoy. I think hot plates work the best for me. Yeah. Sorry. I don't have a better answer for that one. <laughs> what are your favorite blends? Okay. I'm trying to think vendor by vendor, what my absolute favorite scents are. So the melted mousse it would be her key lime pie, hundred percent. Sugar Melts by Stacy. I love her peach ice cream from L3. I love White Elephant Exchange on its own. And I love Today is October 3rd. Those are some of my favorites. From Super Tarts, I love Coven. I love Morning Walk. I love Violet. I love, oh my gosh, I'm like, I now feel like I'm blanking. Um, Jaws. Oh my gosh. How did I forget about Jaws? I love Go to Sleep from Super Tarts. Um, Scentsy, Sweet Plum Pastry, and Bonfire Beach, and Pink Cotton from Walmart. I love that Sugar Pumpkin Cronuts. I have so many of them. That's one of my absolute favorites. Um, Teddy Bees. I love anything of her Blackberry. Um, her Tiff's favorite back Blackberry is my favorite. Witchy Woman, um, obviously I talk about Witchy Woman like every four seconds it feels like. I love Trickin' and Treatin'. Um, what else? I love Surfside Sweet Shop. So many from Teddy Bees I feel like I could name. Um, Sassy Girl Aroma, I love Christmas at Santa's, At the North Pole, Oath, Halloween Night, any of her Beach Night blends in general. Um, candles. I love leaves. I love vanilla snowflake, huh? cider lane, sweater weather. Oh man. See, now I'm, now I'm getting into my wax stash here and seeing if I missed anything. Oh, birds from super tarts. That is a, a favorite of mine as well. Killer clowns from super tarts. Um, Destination Wax. I just love her plain dirt. That one is so good. I love Ghostess from Destination Wax. Case has an amazing pumpkin peanut brittle. Like Bath and Body Works type that I really enjoy. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to see if I'm missing any kind of major ones. But I would say those are probably like my, <laughs> my top favorites that at least I can kind of pinpoint at the moment but yeah so many and it just depends on what day you ask me probably is the answer that uh you would get what is your biggest accomplishment this year you know when I was thinking about it uh, I felt like I couldn't come up with much to be honest um uh, I was in school all year so this is my first year like full year doing my master's so maybe just finishing some classes like as mundane as that sounds working full time and then getting your master's on side of that, you know, plus everything else with life. It's, it can be tough. Um, and I can't even imagine those of you that have kids too, and are doing the same things, but yeah. So I would say maybe that 
being a good mom to rip. <laughs> um, yeah, but I didn't accomplish too much else this year. You know, that, that question kind of had me thinking. I was like, man, really need to, to do more next year, I feel like. Um, let's see. What are your scent trend predictions for the vendor wax world in 2023? So I have no idea what's going to be like the hot thing in 2023, but I would love for Paulo not to be as much, much of a thing. I know that sounds crazy because I do love Paulo, but I feel like now I'm overloaded in Paulo blends and I'm afraid I'm going to get tired of them. So I would love to see, you know, more fruity stuff kind of come out. I'm still on a big beach night kick. So things more like that, like uh, I chopped it earlier, but that blush from Teddy B's where it's like a, a woodsy fruit. I just, stuff like that is so unique right now. Things like Escobar, <laughs> as much as it's beautiful, it's just not unique to my collection anymore. So I would love to see just kind of a fruitier trend maybe. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, and it's not like I don't like Paulo. I obviously love Paulo, but, or maybe I just need to stop buying as much, but I feel like that's been kind of all the, the rave over the last probably like two years, but we will see. I, I predict, actually Carson mentioned this. I think it was Carson. Maybe I'm thinking wrong, but somebody mentioned this the other day that they think that a lot of vendors will fall in 2023 because of the rising prices. Um, you know, we're seeing some vendors already being on their last year or have stopped making wax and, uh, others have increased their prices drastically, which I understand. Um, obviously the supply demand is a lot higher now, but I, I could see 2023 being a year of vendors leaving the vendor wax world. So, um, I hope I'm wrong, <laughs> but I, I'm getting that kind of vibe um, as well. So we'll just have to see see what happens. I believe this is my last question. So if I missed any, I'm so, so sorry, but I think this is my last one. What's your uh, Myers-Briggs personality type? So I am an ISFJ, which is introverted, observant, feeling, and judging. So when I first took this, I knew like a second, the second I got it, I was like, oh yeah, this is totally accurate for me. Um, the ISFJ is the defender, which is actually kind of funny because my name Alexis means defender and helper of mankind. So it's kind of funny that this is also like the personality trait that I got. So I, I looked it up online to kind of share some of the characteristics with you, but it says that these people tend to be warm and unassuming in their own steady way. They're efficient and responsible, giving careful attention to practical details in their daily lives. Hardworking, devoted, deep sense of responsibility. Defenders can be counted on to meet deadlines, remember birthdays and special occasions, shower their loved ones with gestures of care and support but they re rarely demand recognition for all that they do. Um, what else? Tend to have well-developed people skills and robust social relationships. That's kind of funny. That, <laughs> I don't know about a robust relationship, but um, let's see. What are the strengths? Supportive, reliable, observant, enthusiastic, hardworking, and good practical skills are the strengths. The weaknesses are overly humble, taking things personally, repressing their feelings, overcommitted, reluctant to, reluctant to change, and too altruistic. So I feel like for the most part that describes me fairly well. It's really interesting to see how accurate some of these things are. So I'd be curious, do you guys feel like your Myers-Briggs? personality matches you or do you feel like it totally got it wrong um, for me I feel like it's pretty it's pretty spot on but I have more wax to chat here but I am out of questions so 
I probably will cut it here. I want to thank you guys so much. If you asked me anything for watching this video, it's a, it's a lengthy one. So I appreciate you sticking around. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.